Welcome back to Film Fanatics. My name's Miles, and today we're talking about The Flash. Now, I know I'm a bit late on The Flash, but who cares? Let's go ahead and get into it. I like, I'll go ahead and say, I kind of like The Flash outside of, you know, the normal tropes what everyone didn't like, the CGI and all that good stuff, and a couple of uh, the little elements they used throughout the movie. But like I said, I think the concept of, you know, the hero was already made, he could, makes a couple decisions, loses his powers, and now we get to re-see an origin story, and then like how it goes forward and how it matures Barry. I actually enjoyed that. Now, I understand Ezra Miller has been through some things, and I don't condone a single last one of them, but let's not lie. let us We got to admit, he makes the movie. Like, he did some phenomenal acting here. So, you know, if he thinks, you know, he's all that in a bag of chips and he can act like that in real life because he's a badass actor, that's not right, all right? Let's not make bad decisions. Let's do good things in life and let's be outstanding citizens. But before I get into my review, my breakdown, my pros and my cons of this movie, I want to go ahead and say thank you all so much to my 66 subscribers. Now, I already know we're about to get a billion more. So thank you to the billion more that are about to hit it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and you already know what we're doing this for. We're doing this for... We're trying to get a movie theater fashion so all million of us can sit in it and watch. What's a good movie? I guess we're going to watch The Creator in 10,000 millimeters. Hopefully that's a good movie. I'll be able to review that coming up soon. But hey, let's get into it. So The Flash kind of opens up with our character Barry kind of grieving over, you know, the fact that his mom's gone. We also get an, an insane freaking, you know, baby action scene, which is kind of ridiculous, you know, terrible CGI, but you know, that's just one thing we just gonna have to get over in this movie, the bad CGI. But he comes to Batman, realizes that maybe he can go back in time, save his mother, and also inevitably saving his father from getting arrested and also getting framed for this. So he goes back in time, saves his mom, but ends up realizing he has changed his future, which inevitably has our later on villain kick him out of the chrono bowl. Cause he, to travel back through time, he uses a chrono bowl, which basically shows all the possible futures, realities, past, and everything that he could go across. So he gets knocked out of that into the new timeline where Barry had, where the new Barry has yet to receive his powers. He un and then our current Barry, the one that we've been following since, you know, the Justice League and everything, he eventually lets him know that, okay, the date that's coming up where my accident happened is coming up soon. So they go and try to recreate the accident. And while they're recreating this accident, the lightning flash goes through our original Barry to the new Barry, giving the new Barry more enhanced, better powers, but also taking away Barry's powers, which, like I said, opens up us into a new origin story for our Flash, which lets him mature, realizes that the present Barry that we are following now is very immature, very corny, very lame, very unpalatable, very just a child. And Barry has to realize he can't be a child. He has to be an adult and he needs to get things done throughout the course of this mission in the, in the chase of getting his power back, looking for more metahumans, looking for the Batman of this timeline. So they eventually run into my he's Batman and he's an old geezer. And he's just an old rich guy who just makes sandwiches and paninis in his kitchen. And you know, he's just not the same Batman. So sort of a Batman Beyond type of Batman right here, but there's no Robin, there's no, uh, you know, Batman Beyond Batman that we can follow. So we're also we're on the um, hunt for metahumans. So obviously, most of the metahumans just don't exist, which doesn't make sense. I would have preferred maybe the cartoon version where we got to see, you know, Wonder Woman and uh, Aquaman fight, because like that would have been way more badass to like as far as thematically and then seeing all our other characters get together, because you could have kept the most of the movie the same. Fuck Zod. And we could have just had like, Wonder Woman and Aquaman fighting, someone would have died, and then the rest of our heroes would have took down the other one. Saving that universe, getting back to the original timeline, or fuck saving it, shit, blow it up. And then we could have just seen Flash run as fast as he can to go fix what he did because he realizes, you know, this world is going to end. A lot like kind of what happened in this movie. So on the quest of looking for more medic humans, they run over Supergirl and, you know, they put her in the sun. She gets um, more energy from the sun, eventually helping them out of the predicament that they got themselves in looking for. Her. So now 
the big old issue is, and this has happened a little bit earlier in the movie, Zod is coming back. And Clark Kent, Superman, is not around to whoop him. So this is sort of a predicament. Like, you know, Superman was able to kind of do this more or less on his own in the first Man of Steel. You know, whoop their ass because, you know, he's Superman. But, like, three motherfuckers could not take this guy down. And they lost and lost and lost. And this eventually causes our present Barry to keep running back in time and eventually, you know, mutilating himself and turning himself into the ultimate badass of some, and you know, he was drooling on screen. I wouldn't say badass. He was kind of, kind of weird looking, but he goes back in time so many times and it turns him into like a really bad flash, like the negative flash, I think. And Barry has to go back into the chrono bowl and realize that, holy cow, I, with me, you know, saving my mother, you know, inevitably freeing my father, it got rid of most of the metahumans and now our world is doomed so this is what really makes him mature and makes and has to take on the other barry to let him realize that this shit ain't gonna work we gotta be heroes not grieving bastards so he eventually takes down this barry goes back in time has a really heartfelt moment i love that moment in this movie that heartfelt moment like i said there are a lot of good beats that worked and another and another part of this movie that i think actually worked was a microcosm of what phase four marvel wanted to be which is where we go back to the original man of steel and we see what was barry doing he was just a trash ass superhero and he couldn't really do much of a shit and he and people end up dying because of that and i think that was a good like trope to see like where were you like so i think earlier in marvel phases one two and three there were points where we were like where are all the other heroes what are they doing where are they at and i think marvel phase four tried to do that but at the same time like these these Projects cost real life money. They take real amounts of time. COVID did happen. So what it ended up looking like was they were just shoving a bunch of garbage down our throat, agenda based things instead of actually building good stories with it's like, okay, our hero over here isn't a part of our main group because they're simply not ready and the story will show you that. So by the end of it, they would have grown to a point where now they can be recruited or now they can keep going and they're more acclimated with their superhero powers and later down the line they'll be a great addition to the avengers just like kind of how this movie displayed with the flash but i said like i said overall i thought the origin idea i thought a lot of the elements of the story were pretty great like i said the idea of not having like a real main villain the moral of the story was a new origin story for our flash to see him grow up to see him become a better flash like i said the movie ends with him you know eventually still saving his dad putting the putting the can of tomatoes on the top shelf so the camera will see that it's him so you know it does end up changing our you know the reality that barry is in now which is another way for the studios to kind of loose endly say that you know this may or may not be the universe we're following but if y'all like it then it is but if not scrap it he, he still changed stuff so you know it gives the studio a way out to you know kind of you know, say, oh, well, based on the success, that's why I say these projects, you know, they are they cost real time and real money. So that's why I said overall, pros of this movie, I love the origin story. I love how Barry matures. And I love that we, you know, we get to see a bunch of Batman, Supergirls, and I love how the story just goes. Like I said, cons of it, the cartoon version was a little bit better. It was way more badass, way more shit going on. And, you know, you can't really get done by the DC cartoons, especially when you have a, you know, close to 250 that million dollar budget another con the cgi is so fucking terrible dog when i initially saw this i was trying to look past it but you know let's be real bro there's no excuse for that shit but if you made it to this point in the video thank you so so very very much i definitely appreciate you make sure you leave a like make sure you leave a comment make sure you subscribe make sure you hit those notifications notification bells and let's get to 1 million so we can go see these movies in a bigger theater and actually experience some badass shit i know you want to do it stop wasting time stop messing around and let's hit that subscribe button thank you so very very much have a great rest of your day take care